welcome back the last class we have discussed about uh, the uh, d latch in this class we are going to discuss about uh, the negative edge triggered master slave uh, d flip flop we'll see how the circuit is going to work as master slave okay so since it is a master slave uh, d flip flop there are two stages are there master the second stage will be the slave so this is slave and this is master okay look at the logic symbol here so there is a bubble this bubble indicates it is a negative edge triggered master slave flip flop okay so then if this is the symbol if it if it look like this say for example uh, this is c and uh, this is a d okay and this is q and q bar okay so this is nothing but your positive edge trigger d flip flop there is a bubble so it is a negative edge trigger flip flip uh, d flip flop okay so this indicates that the outputs will be available at the slave only during the falling edge of the clock during the rising edge master will be updated during the falling edge slave will be updated okay so let us see how exactly the circuit going to work okay so we know the inputs i'll just give a clock signal like this a d and a q okay you have a two outputs called qm and qs okay so if your d input is zero when there is a clock signal first initially the master will be updated as zero so the slave is holding the previous state okay so that is one so obviously a uh, qm bar will be the complement of qm and qs bar will be the complement of qs okay so slave will remain in the set state only and only the master will be updated during the uh, rising edge of the clock okay now during the falling edge of the clock okay so uh, same d as zero but uh, the master also holds the same zero only because the master is not going to update with any values even if you change the d value as one it is not going to update so the slave will be updated as zero so previously the slave was uh, the slave was in the set state now the slave is entering into the uh, reset state okay so uh, let us see uh, the step by step okay so now i will give d is equal to zero if i give d is equal to zero and i will apply clock is equal to 1 if i apply clock is equal to 1 my clk n will be 0 and clk p will be 1 okay so i'll just update all the values now see clk is equal to man, clk n is equal to 0 means so this will be 0 clk p will be 1 that means that this transmission gate is turned on uh, now clk n is equal to 0 and clk p will be one this transmission gate is uh, turned off okay and now clk n is equal to 0 clk p is equal to 1 so this transmission gate is also turned off and now clk n is equal to 0 and clk p is equal to 1 so this transmission gate is uh, turned on so previously i have assumed the slave will be in the set state so this is 1 uh, this will be 0 okay so the output across this inverter it will become 0 over here so that 0 is serving as the input over here this will be 1 so since this transmission gate is uh, uh, turned on so this value it is passing over here so you get 0 so now the slave is in the Uh, set to state that is the previous state the slave is in the set state okay now we will see here how it is uh, going to work now the this transmission gate is turned on so the value of d due to the presence of this inverter this will become one so that one the transmission gate is just act like a buffer so it is going to pass this one over here okay so that is inverted so now master is holding a value as 0 but that 0 is serving as a input over here okay so the output of this inverter it will be 1 but this transmission gate is uh, turned off so it is not passing this 
a value. Now, when you give clock signal is equal to 1, when you give clock signal is equal to 1, the master will be updated and slave is not updated. So, master is in the reset state, whereas the slave is in the set state. Why? The master is disconnected from the slave. Why? Because this particular transmission gate is turned off. The master gets disconnected from the slave. So, the slave holds the previous state as a set state, but the master is updated into a reset state. Are you getting it? Now, that is what in the next slide I have shown. So, it is D is equal to 0. Whenever your clock will be 1, this switch is closed, whereas this switch is open. So, you get uh, the this 1, it is uh, passing on to this particular inverter input, we get a 0, but that 0 is also serving as the input, we get the output of I3 will be 1, but since switch is uh, open, it is not going to uh, the uh, that uh, particular value is not passing over here. Since this switch is uh, open over here, so the new value of master is not connected to the slave, whereas the slave is holding a, a the uh, set state value. The slave is holding a, a set state value only. So because uh, this is a logic one, okay, this is logic one. So you get here as zero this 0 is serving as an input over here. So, switch is closed over here. So, this is 1. That means, the switch is closed. This 1 is passed to the I6 inverter. The output of I6 inverter will be connected to the uh, input of I7 inverter. So, it will be in loop. Even if it goes over here also, you get a 0. So, the again, I8 inverter output will become 1 only. So, there will be no change in the uh, state. Master is updated whereas, the slave is not updated. So, there is no, the slave is not updated. So, there is no change in the state because this will remain in the uh, loop. This will remain in the loop. There is no change in the uh, state. Okay? So, only during the rising edge of the clock, the master is updated. That is what it is written it as load master. That is what it is written it as load master. So, come to the previous slide. Now, what I will do? I will do the CLK as 0. So, my CLK n will be 1 and CLK p will be a 0. Okay? So, I will be keeping the d value same as 0 only. I am not changing it. So, now what happens? Now, this will become 1 and this will become 0. So, this transmission gate is uh, turned off whereas, this will become 1 okay, and this CLK P will become 0. So, this transmission gate is now it is uh, turned on. Okay. So, now this uh, 0 is serving as a input and the I3 inverter output is 1. So, since this transmission gate is on, the switch is closed, that one is passing over here okay, and it is serving as an input to I2. Again, I2 output will be 0. So, this particular one will be in loop now. So, the master will not be updated now. Okay. So, we will see the slave now. Now, your CLK P is equal to 0 and CLK n is equal to 1. Now, this transmission gate is turned on. Once this transmission gate is turned on, the uh, switch is closed. Whatever the value it is there in the master, it is transferred to the slave. No, So, now you get the value as 0 over here, whereas this transmission gate is turned off because your CLK P will be 0 and CLK 1 CLK n will be 1. So, due to the presence of the, uh, it is serving as 0 to the I6 inverter. I6 inverter output will be 1, not 0 now. So, this 1 is serving as the input to I8 inverter. So, I8 inverter output will be not 1, now it is, no, now it is 0. Now it is 0. So, obviously, QS bar will be the complement of QS. Now, this will, now this will become a logic one. Now, we will see here 
this one is serving as a input to this inverter. So, you get here as the I7 uh, output of I7 inverter will be 0, but uh, since this transmission gate is turned off, it is not passing this value over here. Since this transmission gate is turned off, it is not passing the value over here. So, now the master, since the master it gets connected to the slave, whatever the value it is there on the slave, it is whatever the value it is there on the master, it is transferred to the slave. Now, what is D? D is 0. Now, what is Q? Q is also 0. QS is also 0. So, when you got QS as 0 in the negative edge of the clock ok. So, the same thing if you see here. So, now the switch is open when you apply clock is equal to 0 your D value is 0. So, it is not taking any new value. So, master value will be 0 ok. So, this will be in the loop ok the same this will be in the loop this will be in the loop and since the switch is closed uh, the new value will be transferred to the slave. So, now the slave the I 6 inverter input will be uh, 0, output you get here as 1 ok. So, that uh, again it is serving as input to I 8. So, the output of I 8 will be 0 ok. So, obviously Q s is a complement, Q s bar is a complement of Q s. So, you get here as 0. So, now if you see here the I 7 output of I 7 will be 0, but since this switch is open, so uh, that value is not passing over here. So, finally, the uh, data is loaded onto the slave during the falling edge of the clock. Data is loaded onto the slave during the falling, ok. This is Q n will be 1, 1 minute. So, this will be complement of Q. So, this will be 1. Since Q s is 0, Q s bar is the complement of Q s. So, this will be 1. So, what is the state you see? Previously, it was in the set state ok and master is in the reset state. Now, the slave is updated and slave is entered into the reset state. You can see here 1 0 0 1. Previously, it was in the set state. Now, the slave is entered into the reset state. Uh, data path uh, subsystems. So, single bit addition. So, it is uh, half adder. So, half adder having two inputs and two outputs. So, this is nothing but uh, sum and carry are the two outputs. A and B are the two inputs. Okay. So, so uh, A and B are the two inputs. So, 0 plus 0 will be sum is 0, carry is 0. So, 0 plus 1 will be sum is 1, carry is 0. 1 plus 0 is nothing but sum is 1 carry is 0 and 1 plus 1 will be 0 with the carry 1. So, if you see the uh, sum column ok. So, it resembles to a function table of an XOR gate ok. So, I can write a equation as sum is equal to A X or B. Similarly, if you see the carry out column here. So, the carry out column if you see it is resembles to a function table of a the AND gate right. So, I can write C out is equal to a into B. So, based on these expression, I can uh, realize uh, the by using XOR gate and uh, AND gates. I am pretty sure you uh, could have learned in your lower semesters. So, it is the A and B are the uh, two inputs. So, it is the sum is nothing but A X or B ok and uh, the carry will be equal to uh, A B. Okay, so, carry will be equal to AB. So, the interesting part is uh, that uh, we have to uh, go for a, a full adder. Okay. So, so, next slide we will move on to the uh, full adder. So, full adder has uh, 3 inputs and 2 outputs. So, this is nothing but your carry in called C in. Okay. So, and two outputs called sum and a carry out. So, if you see the function table, ok. So, you can see here for these two possible combination your A and B input will be 0 0 only. So, it is 0 0 0 is in decimal 0, 0 0 1 means in decimal 1, 0 1 0 it is 2, 0 1 1 it is 3, 1 0 0 it is 4, 1 0 1 it is 5, 
one one zero it is six and one one it is one 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 it is seven. So there are three intermediate signals. What are this? G is nothing but your generate signal. P is nothing but your propagate signal. K is nothing but your kill signal. Okay. So when your generate signal will become one, when your C out the carry out is a true independent of your c gain whenever your carry out is a true independent of your c gain so your generate signal will become one so because a and b are one it it is not going to depend on your c gain so it is going to produce as a carry whenever your kill signal will become one okay so your carry out is a false independent of your c gain the carry out is a false independent of your c gain Okay, so when your propagate signal will become one, the propagate signal will become one. That means prop it is going to propagate a carry or produces a carry when it receives a input signal C in. When it receives a input signal a C in. When exactly one of the input is true. When exactly one of the input is true. That means either A. A bar B, or it should be A B bar. One of the input should be true. One of the input should be true. Okay. So what we can write here is the in the equation, one of the input should be true. Okay, and it receives a input signal C in, and then only it is going to propagate a carry. Right, so I can write it as P is nothing but P is nothing but A X or B. P is nothing but A X or B. Okay, so what is sum? Sum is nothing but A X or B X or C in. Sum is nothing but A X or B X or C in. Or I can also write it as it is P X or C in. P X or C in, okay. So now, how we got C out is equal to A B plus A C plus B C, okay. So we can uh, go for a Cournot map to simplify the expression. So you can see here there is a Cournot map. So C it is a three variable. So it is zero, one. So zero, 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 one, 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 zero. So it is zero, one, three, two, and four, five, seven, six. Okay. So uh, I can uh, uh, write it uh, fastly about your uh, the C out. Okay. So zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. One zero zero, one zero one, one one zero, one one one. So when you get uh, C out zero zero zero, you get here one zero one one one. Okay. So the decimal equivalent will be zero one two three four five six seven. So for a third combination, you got C out as one, and you got five. Six and seven, you got a C out as one. Okay, so the quad is not possible. The pair is possible over here. So if you see here, what is the value I got? So I got a C out is equal to a B C. Okay, uh, next uh, I can. Uh, okay, so next this pair is possible. For this pair, what I got zero one. So C. And then this is A, okay. And then plus, I can use a uh, the one more color, okay. So I get here as one more pair is possible here. So that is A and then B. So finally we got B C plus C A plus A B. So this can also be written as your C out can also be uh, written as. I can write it as. I will write here as AB plus. Okay, 
I will take here as C as common, C is nothing but is my C in, okay. C is nothing but here it is C in. So, I can write it as C into A plus B. So, C into C into A plus B. So, A B plus C into A plus B. Okay, I can write the C out in this way also. Okay. So, the previous slide if you go here, what is the equation we got? Sum is equal to A x or B x or C. So, it is P x or C and carry is nothing but uh, realized as A bar B bar plus C bar into A bar plus B bar the whole complement. Okay. So, the, that is how we have implemented here A bar and B bar is in series. Okay. Then A bar plus B bar into C bar the same way we have realized in the PMOS side also. So, this is for the carry out and sum is realized using uh, XOR gates. So, let us see with some combination. So, I will take here as the uh, A, B, C in and sum and carry. So, A and B C in is uh, 0, 0, uh, I will take uh, some other value. So, I will take the carry carry one value, carry value. So, it is uh, I will take the B as 1 and C in is also 1. So, what is my uh, the output? My output should be sum should be 0 and carry should be 1. So, we will see how it is going to work. So, now we will see first with Now, A is 0, A is 0 wherever if you see here A, A will be 0 okay? and B and C in will be 1. So, B will be 1, B will be 1 and the C in will be 1. Okay? So, B bar will be 0 and then C bar is also 0 and B will be 1 here. B bar will be 0, B will be 1, C also 1 and A bar will be 1. So, this is how we got uh, the value. So, A will be 0 means A bar is also 1. Okay. So, similarly here when A is 0 means your A bar will be 1, B is 1 means your B bar will be 0. Okay. So, B bar will be 0 and C bar is also 0. So, B bar will be 0, C bar, A bar is also, A bar it will be 1, wait, A bar will be 1, okay. So, A bar will be 1 and then C bar will be 0, B bar is also 0 and A bar will be 1, A bar will be 1 and B bar will be 0. So, I have just filled all the values. What we supposed to get is sum should be 0 and C out should be, the carry out should be 1. So, we will see now how it is going to work. So, this consumes actually uh, 32 transistors. It consumes uh, 32 transistors. So, we can see here. So, this uh, A is 0 means this transistor is on. Okay. So, A bar is 1 means this transistor is off. So, B is 1 means it is off because it is a PMOS transistor. So, B bar is 0. So, this is also on and this is also on. So, B is 1, this transistor is off. Again, the C bar is 0. So, this transistor is on. C is 1, this transistor is off. C bar is 0. So, it is a P, uh, N channel network. It is a N channel network. So, if it is 0 means this transistor is off. B is 1, yeah, this transistor is on. So, B bar is 0 means this transistors, both the transistors are off. Okay. Since A is 0, again this transistor is off, but the A bar is 1. Okay. So, this transistor is on and the B is also 1. So, this transistor is on and C is also 1. So, that transistor is on. So, now if you see at this particular point is your sum output. At this particular point is your sum output. So, you can see here, see 
is there any path exist over here but this is on okay i can use a different uh, color so yeah now this is on but this is off so this is a series path but this transistor is off so there is the path is not going to exist similarly if you see here these two are on okay but this is off so path is not going to exist here so at any chance your output sum is not going to pull up to your supply voltage whereas in this case you can see here all the three transistors are turned on here all the three transistors are turned on okay so i'll just do undo all the three transistors are turned on so i get the sum output is pulled down to zero so i got s is equal to zero okay so similarly we can uh, check for the uh, c out okay so c out if you see here so this transistor is off whereas this transistor is on okay because you are giving b bar as the input signal so it is zero okay and then the c bar so this is also zero this is also turned on okay and now so this is on whereas this is off so this series path is not going to exist because this switch is open okay so here this is an n channel so this is off and this is on this is off so since your c bar is uh, switch is off okay so series path is not going to exist and again this is on but this is off so this series path is also not going to exist so whereas this whereas if you see here okay so this path exist this is not exist whereas this path is exist why because both b bar and c bar is turned on both b bar and c bar is turned on so your output so your output is pulled up to the supply voltage so that's why you got c out is equal to 1 so that is what we got c out is equal to 1 so see Uh, converting from a to a bar we require two transistors because in a cmos we know no one pmos transistors and one nmos transistor so we require six and plus you count the number of transistors so totally to realize this circuit we require 32 transistors to realize a one bit full adder okay so next look at this circuit diagram we know what is carry what is carry we know it is uh, ab plus bc plus ca so ab plus i can take c as a common so i can write it as a plus b c is equal to ab plus c into a plus b and sum is not like ax or bx or c in you can see here sum can also be realized as abc plus a plus b plus c into c out bar how how you are going to get this equation let us go back to the function table look at this function table here leave the first column that is this and the last row leave the first row and the last row leave the first row and the last row and observe the remaining rows your sum is ne the c out and sum are complemented each other that means whenever your c out is zero sum will be one see here c out is zero sum will be one c out is zero sum will be one c out is one sum will be zero exactly opposite both sum and carry outputs are complements each other leaving the first row and the last row leaving the first row and the last row you can see here it is complement you can see here it is complement 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 and complement so i can write the sum expression as a plus b plus c into c out bar okay now plus abc also have written right plus abc is nothing but for this combination a into b into c a into b into c a into b into c and a into b into c okay so that's why i can 
write the sum expression as a b c for the considering the first row and the last row for the remaining rows it is a plus b plus c into c out bar now look at this uh, circuit diagram here okay so i have also mentioned the signals related to c in this is nothing but the propagate p is nothing but your propagate so what is propagate here what is propagate that is nothing but c into a plus b c into a plus b a plus b is nothing but your propagate a plus b is nothing but your propagate c here c is equal to i can write it as a b plus p into c in what is my p my p is nothing but a plus b my p is nothing but a plus b okay so now you can see this is the kill function this part is referred as a kill function similarly this part is referred as a generate function look at this uh, circuit diagram your p mos network is identical to that of your n mos network it does not work with conduction complements it does not work with conduction complements your p mos network is identical to that of your n mos network you can see here that's why this is also called as mirrored full adder it is also called as mirrored full adder you can see here a and b is in parallel okay and then that is in series with c here also a and b is in parallel in series with the c okay so here it is a b here also it is a b here a plus b plus c into c out bar into a b c here the sum is realized as a plus b plus c plus into c out bar plus a b c a plus b plus c into c out bar plus a b c but the carry as a b plus c into a plus b a b plus c into a plus b are you getting it okay so now we will uh, take up uh, one case how it is going to work the same case only we will take so i'll just erase this okay now let us take up the case as uh, a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 1 and c is also equal to 1 okay so the p mos network is identical to that of a n mos network and it does not work with conduction complement and it reduces the number of uh, series transistors okay it reduces the number of series transistors and make Uh, the layout more uniform and make the layout more uniform so this circuit diagram it requires only 28 transistors whereas in case of our previous we have designed using a static cmos logic gates it consumes 32 transistors okay so now we will see with this a uh, case so when a is 0 and b is 1 and c is 1 so this is uh, this transistor is on whereas this is a p mos this is off a is zero this is on this is off okay and then if you see here b is one okay so this is on and it is what is that uh, the uh, which is this a a is zero so this is off and b is one this is turned on okay similarly if you see uh, a zero it is on whereas b one it is off and here it is a will be this so a will be zero so this is off and this is on okay and we can just fill the whichever transistor is turned on or turned off we will see now this is a so this is on whereas b and c will be off okay similarly uh, a is on okay and b and c will be off so here it is a is off whereas b and c will be uh, turned on but here it is 
this this signal let me track the signal so this is b this is on and uh, this signal is c this is also on whereas this signal is a so this is off okay so finally we get the output here as c out and sum okay so we will see now uh, because here if you see here uh, the since you are uh, c uh, the transistor that is a c input transistor it is off the series path it is not going to exist over here so anyway this transistor is already in off state here also the series path is not going to exist but when you see here there is a series path exist so finally what is the output we are getting here is we get the c out bar as a zero we get the c out bar as a zero okay so now this c out bar is serving as a input so to the inverter as well as you get the final output as one okay so what is the output we supposed to get for 0 1 1 combination for 0 1 1 combination uh, we get sum is equal to 0 and c out c out is equal to 1 sum is equal to 0 and c out is equal to 1 sum is equal to 0 and c out is equal to 1 so now we got the carry output as 1 we got the carry output as 1 now look at this sum now since this transistor is turned on now we are giving a input as 0 that means this pmos transistor is also turned on this pmos transistor will be off this two is already in the off state we get the output as we get the output as logic 1 we get the output as logic 1 and this logic 1 is given to the inverter finally we get the sum as 0 finally we get the sum as 0 okay so this is how we can realize a, a full ladder using only 28 uh, transistors so next we go in depth to the uh, data path uh, logic cells okay so i'll just give a brief introduction about uh, this uh, ripple uh, carry adder so you can see here there are the uh, this is a 4 bit uh, ripple carry adder so there is a input uh, c in see how the ripple carry adder is going to work how the ripple carry see the previous carry output is serving as a input to the next stage this is a carry output that is serving as a carry input to the next stage again the previous carry output is serving as a input to the carry out to the next stage so we get this is a final c out this c out 2 is nothing but msb minus 1 so this is your msb minus 1 whereas c out 3 will be msb so there are two output signals and this output signal we can connect it we can connect to the xor gate so to check the arithmetic overflow okay so this logic block how it looks there are two inputs a and b and there is a carry input called a c in and there are two outputs called sum and c out and one more output is nothing but your msb minus 1 okay and look at this uh, diagram here the what is this uh, the it uses a two level metal okay the data will be there on the metal one and control lines will be there on the metal two it uses a two level metal data will be there on the metal one and control lines will be there on the uh, metal two okay so this is a structure of a uh, the four bit uh, ripple carry uh, adder so in detail we will discuss in uh, next class thank you